Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayek Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus Christ is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess just that fact. And the Holy Bible is the only standard for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, I trust this finds you feeling bright and blessed this morning. I hope you have your learning cap on today because we're going to talk about something that you've probably thought about a lot, but never really had an answer to. And let me say right up front, I'm not saying that this is the answer, but I'm saying it is a very strong possibility. Now, today is September the 18th. In the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, the text we're going to be looking at is going to be found in Exodus chapter 3 and verse 5, which reads, And he said, he being God, draw not nigh hither. He's saying this unto Moses at the burning bush. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. Now, if you're like me, you've probably often wondered, why was Moses commanded to take his shoes off? And we would speculate, well, it's holy ground. It's different from the ground that we normally walk upon. Now, there, as I said, there could be other implications as to what this actually means, but let's just take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 11, and let's look at verse 24. It says, Every place wherein the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. From the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea shall your coast be. Now we're told the same thing in Joshua. After Moses has died, God is reiterating to Joshua that the same laws and commandments still stand and hold true for the people. And so he says in verse 3, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Now, if you know anything about Jewish culture, you know that the foot or the shoe is very important. That's why Jesus said, if you go into a town and they do not accept you, Wipe the dust off of your feet so that you don't carry that back in to Jerusalem, to holy ground. That's why you see in Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 9, when it's talking about a woman who is married, her husband dies, the brother of that husband has a responsibility to take her as his wife and carry on the seed, carry on the lineage. Well, in verse 9 of chapter 25, it says, then it, if, if, the, if the brother refuses to take her as his wife, it says, Then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders and loose his shoe from off his foot, spit in his face, and answer and say, So shall it be done unto that man that will not build up his brother's house. You see, there's something very significant about the shoe. If you'll remember here a while back, a couple of years ago, one of the dignitaries, it may have even been the president, I think it was, I think it was President Bush Jr., who was giving a speech and a Jewish man took his shoe off and threw it at him, his sandal, took it and threw it at the president. And most in America had no idea what that meant. But that was the greatest insult that a Jewish man could bestow upon another person, taking the shoe off and throwing it at him. Well, in the story of Ruth and Boaz, you remember the story. Hopefully you do. It's a short book. If you don't remember it, go back and read it. It's a beautiful story and picture of the coming Messiah. But in chapter 4, it tells us that Boaz has decided to take Ruth to be his wife. In verse 1, it says, Boaz went up to the gate of the city. Now, this is where all business transactions took place. So in the morning, when the Jewish leaders woke up, they went out to the gate and they sat at the gate and they would wait there until the people came to them for a business transaction. And so Boaz goes up to the gate, he sits down there, and behold, the kinsman of whom Boaz spake came by. Now Boaz cannot take her as wife according to Jewish law until he finds if Ruth has someone in line 
to be married to. And so he goes unto the gate and he says, Ho, such a one, turn aside, sit down here. And so he turned aside and he sat down. He took 10 men of the elders of the city and said, sit down here. And they sat down. And he said unto the kinsmen, these would be those that could possibly be in line to marry Ruth. So he says unto the kinsmen, Naomi, that has come again out of the country of Moab, selleth a parcel of land. Now remember, any land that your foot steps upon shall be yours. That's the key idea here. And so again, it's referring to land here. It says, this land was our brother Elimelech's. And I thought to advertise thee, saying, buy it before the inhabitants, before the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, redeem it. But if you will not redeem it, then tell me that I may know, for there is none to redeem it beside thee. And I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Then said Boaz, what day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi, Thou must also buy it of Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar my own inheritance. Redeem thou my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. Now this was the manner, the custom, the law in former time in Israel concerning redeeming and concerning changing. For to confirm all things, a man plucked off his shoe, and he gave it to his neighbor, and this was a testimony in Israel. But now notice verse 8. Therefore the kinsman said unto Boaz, Buy it for thee. So Boaz took off his shoe. Now let's go back to the original text. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 5. God says unto Moses, Draw not nigh hither. Put off your shoes from off your feet, for the place wherein thy standest is holy ground. Could it be that God is saying unto Moses, this is holy consecrated ground, and if you walk thereon, it's no longer holy or consecrated, because wheresoever your foot lands, that land belongs to you. And this doesn't belong to you, Moses. This belongs to me. It's dedicated unto me. Now, you probably say at this point, okay, great history lesson, Pastor, but what are you trying to tell us? What are you saying this for? I'm saying it for this reason. If you'll go to the book of Matthew and you look at the teaching of Jesus in chapter 6, Jesus says in verse 5, When you pray, do not be as the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet a designated place, a consecrated place unto the Lord, not a normal living area in your home, but this is a private place, a secret place that you have consecrated and set aside to meet with the Lord. And when you shut the door, pray to your father who is in secret, and thy father who sees in secret shall reward thee openly." So the first thing we learn here is that we are to be praying. But the second thing we learn here is that there is a purpose for a designated area, a separate place. You'll remember the, the Jewish people built an altar in honor unto God, and that altar signified a specific place where the Lord was to be remembered. And so it is with us, friends. There should be a place in our homes, maybe outside our home, where we go to meet with the Lord. And it isn't a common area. And even when we step up on it, we should step with reverence and fear, with a, with a mindset and an attitude of humility and self-abasement. And we enter into that place realizing it is almost as if we are stepping from one dimension into another dimension and we are there to meet the Lord. We are on holy ground. We are not on common ground of man, but we are on holy ground to have an audience with the living God, the Almighty, the Ancient One. And it is my feeling and experience, friends, if you will do this, if you will enter into your times of fellowship with the Father with such a mindset, a mental picture, your times of prayer and fellowship 
will be unlike anything that you've ever experienced before. Now may the God of grace and mercy and truth bless you today as you seek to serve him. May you exalt the Lord Jesus in all you do. And may you walk in the spirit full of joy unspeakable and complete in glory. Well, I love you, friends. Now, as he wills, and until next time, I'll see you on the next video.